So I have a number of variable frequency inverter drives in my workshop and I have a single phase supply and I have several three phase motors. So I have three like this and these are the very you know cheap bottom of the end range I guess uh, inverters which you see readily available online. This is the first of this kind that I purchased in Pakistan for the Colster student lathe and it performed quite well for a number of years. The first issue I saw with it was that the casing cracked in several places. The next problem more recently was I, I noticed that one of the fans was starting to make a noise on startup and perhaps one of the bearings is going or it needs to be cleaned or something. But I thought again I something I could sort out myself, I could replace that. But then about two weeks ago after doing some heavy work on the lathe the RCD started to trip in the house. It tripped again a few more times and then suddenly it tripped every time. So there was a problem. Now go back a few weeks when I installed the Costa student lathe in this workshop I remember checking with the multimeter the motor windings and I was quite happy that they were okay and I put the motor back and I thought yep yeah, everything's fine. So the conclusion I came to crack case, a dry bearing on one of the fans and now the RCD tripping I thought okay it's time to change this. This has done me well, this was cheap, uh, it's now time to maybe consider upgrading. So I took the plunge and I got one of these uh, UK made tech drive inverters. I have one already which I bought second hand for my Myford lathe when I needed to upgrade the motor and I was pleased with that. Um, I like the quality of it, uh, the functions and I have no doubt that it's a much better device than the, the other one that I had. So I fitted it out with, um, with a pendant. Uh, before I was just using the buttons on here which wasn't really satisfactory. So got this all sorted out, uh, all wired in, turned it on and I was very disappointed that it tripped the RCD again. So I've done some tests, got the multimeter out and I have uh, checked the windings, well not the windings, the cables to the windings and discovered that there is some leakage. So earth on the motor to any of the windings and I'm picking up at the moment about 18k ohms. Uh, it's the same on all of them. When I checked that with my other motors uh, on the mini machine, that was about 1 mega ohm. Yesterday, today it's about 10 mega ohms. And on the new um, drive on the MIFA, that was also 10 mega ohms. So there's a problem. Now, just recently, we've had a lot of rain here, and this isn't the driest of workshops. I have begun to wonder whether it's not the VFD, but actually it's the motor or the wiring. And that awareness that humidity and dampness can have an impact on insulation. So I'm wondering whether it's the motor that's a problem, whether the windings are on their way out, and it's just this recent change in weather. And already I notice a difference between yesterday and today. Yesterday I was reading 14 K ohms, now I'm measuring 17 to 18. And that's just a few hours later. The weather's changed. Could it be the motor windings? I'm going to actually open up uh, the back of the lathe, remove these cables and measure the resistance on the motor itself. So when I got to look at the motor um, I did a couple of tests. One was to check the resistance of each winding and uh, that was okay. But when I checked the resistance between the windings and the body there was um, a problem. Uh, on one of the windings I discovered that uh, there was an unacceptably low resistance. So instead of being up in the mega ohms, it was significantly lower, and uh, that uh, you know that made me to conclude that the insulation was breaking down. Okay, I've got the motor mounted on my drill table, and uh, the reason for that is I've got to drill and tap three holes in the pulley so that I can pull it off the shaft. It's very tight, so I've made this cap out my rotary table. I've uh, drilled out three holes, the tapping size for the threads I'm going to put in here and it's got a register which fits in the, the bore of the pulley so it locates and this clamp is here just to hold the end cap on and the other clamp 
is just holding a bar there so that I can hold the shaft still while I drill through the, the, the holes here. The other thing is I've got the motor sitting on its on the base here, on the end, and I just put these couple of angle plates in here to hold it steady. Drill through these holes, tap them, and then hopefully we can pull that pulley off. Despite the appearance, this Heath Robinson setup actually worked quite well. I tapped for quarter inch Whitworth because I had studs of that size available. You can see here that the pulley really was a good fit on the shaft, probably never been taken off and it was necessary to pull it right to the very end of the shaft. A few more turns and I think this will come, come right off. I just uh, put a bit more s spacing behind there. Good. So it's perhaps not surprising that this motor um, gave up finally. It was produced in 1964, just a year before the lathe. It's been in various environments. In Pakistan, it's been in a humid environment in one location, and in the other location, it's been in a extremely hot, dry environment. And I do wonder whether the cooling was quite up to that environment. Another factor is where we live, the electricity supply was very unreliable, and we used to have uh, spikes, um, surges, uh, which would cause problems um, on various equipment. So a number of factors there, age, environment, um, Finally, I, th I think it gave up when I was doing some particularly heavy work on my Colchester student, probably the heaviest I've done so far. I was pushing the, the machine and uh, at that point, um, uh, after that, the, the house uh, RCD started tripping. So I came to the conclusion that this motor had had it and I looked at various options. Um, I first of all looked at rewiring. I liked the idea of keeping the motor, but uh, that was prohibitively expensive. So finally I looked around for um, a replacement motor. So I looked at a number of um, alternatives um, online and I finally settled on this WEG. 2.2 kilowatt or three horsepower, three phase, four pole motor. So four pole gives you 1500 RPM. Um, I went finally for cast iron body, um, like the original, but there are a number of differences. The center height is slightly different, uh, but that's not a problem. There's uh, pr plenty of adjustment in the lathe. The shaft diamonds is bigger. The original was three quarter, and this is 28 millimeters, so just over 1.1 inches. But fortunately, there's plenty of space on the pulley, on the hub, to bore that out. So I'm going to do that and cut a new keyway. Yeah, superficially, the body looks bigger. But um, if you compare the actual section where the windings are, that's not too dissimilar. There's a bigger end cap on here, and of course, you've got the fan. So with the original design, it relied on the squirrel cage to sort of uh, bring air through uh, the center of the motor. So the cooling was um, on the inside, if you like, uh, and I'm not a motor person. I'm just looking at this, uh, um, you know, as a casual observer. Uh, uh, whereas this one, it's relying on forced convection. So you've got the fins in the cast iron body and you've got a fan on here. So you've got a very positive form of cooling. That's one reason why the motor looks bigger. Um, but I wonder if also this motor perhaps uh, would be more suited to a range of environments as compared with this one. Uh, where you've got different temperatures and maybe different loading. So yeah, I think this is a good replacement. I need to change the the uh, connection here. This is set up for star, so I need to change it back to delta. But in the meantime, I'm going to be working on the pulley and boring out the pulley to fit on here.
This was an opportunity to try out my recently made shaper tool holder, especially for cutting keyways like this. If you'd like to see the build project, then there's a link here. I've tried to get the key out of here, but uh, it's really well and truly wedged in there, and I don't want to damage it. So what I'm going to do is be extra careful on the measurements. So um, I've tried to get the bore nice fit on here because I haven't been able to test it yet because I've got a keyway uh, in the pulley yet. So what I'm going to do now is continue machining the keyway. And I've machined one side. And what I'm going to do now is track across uh, to bring the tool to the other side of the slot plus I have allowed three thou extra. Now in the past I haven't done that with aluminium pulleys because there's a little bit of give but with a cast iron pulley and it's a bit wider there isn't so I've al allowed a little extra clearance there. Two, one. And just double checking with the scale that the width of the slot looks approximately correct. I really am happy with this slotting tool holder. It works very well even in cast iron and this is quite a deep bore. There's a set screw in here. There isn't a lot of material left there, I admit, but uh, I think with a good fit that should be okay. I'm going to take this opportunity to lift this cover off and hopefully I can rotate it because access will be from this side. So let's see if we can get that off and swap this around. I mounted the motor on this base plate and determined the position of the bolt holes and then I removed the base plate and now I'm just drilling and tapping those fixing holes. So I've got forward, reverse and speed control. One thing I need to do because there's extra weight on this I need to put a stabilizing bracket between the rear of here and the column here so that's, that's still to be done. Anyway let's see it uh, working.
Well, that concludes this video, and I do hope you'll join me for the next, hopefully to come out in the next two weeks. Thank you.